What is up guys? Welcome back to the show that is all about me going undefeated, undeservedly, all season long. We are back for week 6 of the GBA D-League, and this week we are taking on Jack, aka the Don Fanatic, and his Norik Skitty. And uh, let's go over his team really quickly. He's got the Megalopony, Latias, Clefable, Registeel, Crocodile, a Volcarona, Delmise, Skuntank, Electivire, Floatzel, and Staraptor. You guys see his full team on the right. You guys know our team. And so, uh, looking at the matchup, this is actually not so tough of a matchup for me. I think I have a very good matchup uh, this week, as uh, as opposed to last week especially, uh, where I just had absolutely nothing for Suicune, but was somehow able to pull it out. And, uh, well, thanks to, to Dan's choke, of course, but uh, we won't dwell on that too much. We are 5-0, and so we're going to try to keep going. If I'm able to get this win, as well as the next week, uh, next week's win over Leo and his Durham Dr Dredagons, I should be in a position to make playoffs guaranteed, no matter what. Seven wins is guaranteed, six wins is a pretty good shot at making playoffs, uh, especially looking at everybody else, else's records after week five. Uh, at the moment, I know none of the week six scores when recording this, so I have no idea what's gone on, uh, but Leo is currently the closest person to me. Even if Jolt wins, he's still uh, at four and two. Leo is the only person that can go five and one, so as long as I win, I stay in the first position, of course, and if Leo loses, then I have a an incredible shot at playoffs because there's nobody even close to me. So let's go over the team. So as you guys can see, the matchup on the right, the first Pokemon that I decided to bring was Salamence. Grandina is back this week for uh, hopefully the first time that we're going to use a Z-move in uh, in Draft League format. And that would be awesome if, uh, if we can pull that off. But, um, and this is probably the best week to do so, honestly, because Dragon Dance is just such a huge threat to his team. Uh, he essentially has to try to bring uh, some kind of choice Mon to beat my team, whether it be choice Latias, choice Crocodile, uh, anything really. If Latias ever locks itself into like Psy Shock, I can easily come in. You guys uh, should see the EVs on the screen as well. We are, uh, of course, hold on, let me pull it up on my end. I didn't have these up, but uh, on Salamence we have. Uh, 52 HP, 8 defense, 252 attack with an adamant nature, and uh, enough speed. I believe this is enough speed to outspeed Megalop, 1 summit plus 1. Uh, even possibly an adamant crocodile, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, an adamant scarf crocodile, 1 summit plus 1. So, um, or even maybe Jolly, I'm not sure. But anyway, we, uh, we're adamant personally, and uh, I can pretty much outspeed his entire team. And uh, outside of scarfers, of course. So. Once I get a Dragon Dance up, if you look at his team, it's really, really hard for him to com combat this. The only two ways that he can deal with this set, as you can see I have Protect from Megalopony's Fake Out, the only ways that he can deal with the set are going to be Unaware Clefable Fable, or uh, Repeated Intimidates with Crocodile, or Registeel. Registeel, I can easily wipe out this game as you guys are going to see. Uh, Crocodile is not a huge issue as it's one of my setup fodder, and uh, of course if I have Protect then I can always scout what he's going for. And then uh, the rest of his team pretty much drops to the rest of my coverage. Now, obviously, I could be running Moxie with the Dragon Dance set, but Intimidate makes it a lot easier for me to set up on his physical threats, like uh, Delmise, like the Crocodile, uh, his Skun Tank, his Electivire, uh, excluding Ice Punch, his Staraptor if it's locked into like close combat, for example, or uh, or even a normal move. Like if I can get up a Dragon Dance on that. Lopany if it's not carrying Ice Punch because it doesn't necessarily have to against me. Uh, I can afford to run just return. So uh, there's a lot of instances on his physical attackers where I can set up. And even his Volcarona, if he doesn't bring the right coverage, I can set up on that. So this is uh, it's very nice to have Intimidate specifically for the physical attackers. And I don't need the Moxie boost to sweep through because Moxie wouldn't do anything for me against the uh, the Clefable anyway. And it's not going to do any uh, anything for me against anything else. The only thing that shuts this down is repeated Intimidates with Crocodile. So I don't really care. So that's uh, that's Grandina, pretty straightforward. Move on into the next Mon, which I actually changed up quite a bit uh, from my initial build, which is uh, Toshiro, the Piloswine. I've got an Impish, Thick Fat, Eviolite. Uh, Piloswine. This thing is uh, pretty well attack invested. It has 204 attack EVs. Uh, of course, it is an impish nature with 20 in defense, 28 in spadef, uh, 252 in HP, and a little bit of speed. The reason that I was running uh, just a tad of speed was because I was initially a curse set, and it, I was curse rest with earthquake and icicle crash. But the problem with a curse rest set is that it struggles to uh, maintain survivability because he has knockoff on crocodile and he has an extremely powerful fighting mon 
in uh, Lopinine, not to mention that he can also very easily bring unaware clef to beat me, uh, to beat setup sweepers like my uh, like my Infernape, like my Salamence, my Cresselia. So running Curse Rest while it looks good on paper against like all of his team, uh, at the end of the day, it's not going to put in as much work as three attacks with Toxic. So the reason that I opted for Toxic is because I have a very, very strong feeling that he will bring Unaware Clefable, and if I can get a Toxic off on it, if he decides not to bring uh, Heal Bell for whatever reason, specifically because he needs an extra coverage move for something like Metagross, then I'll be able to Toxic him, wear him down, and keep him low for the entirety of the game, which is going to be really, really nice uh, for things like Infernape, which you guys are going to see uh, in a minute, but... Uh, basically, that's uh, that's Pillow Swine's job. Ice Shard is really nice against him. Uh, Revenge's Latias quite well. Revenge is the uh, Delmise, which I'm actually also naturally faster than. I should have probably put a little bit more speed in here in case he tried to creep me. I only have four speed EVs, but uh, I doubt his Delmise would run that much speed anyway because it needs a lot of EVs to be uh, able to outspeed my Pillow Swine. So uh, I think he needs to run a lot of speed up to be able to take on my Blastoise if he does bring the Delmise. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I can Ice Skull crash it, and if you see the rest of his team, like nothing really wants to take this on. I could deal with Ridge Steel relatively well. Uh, that's another thing that I outspeed if he doesn't invest in speed uh, at all. And uh, I can take one hit from Lopany potentially as well. And uh, this is also my main Evire check uh, if I have nothing else. And it deals with Skuntank well too. Skuntank is like the one thing on his team that I can absolutely not see coming. Uh, because it's, it d does nothing. Literally it does nothing. The only thing it does is beat Cresselia. It doesn't beat anything else on my team. So there's no reason for him to bring that. He has better options, especially a better dark option in Crocodile. So that's Toshiro the Pillow Swine. Moving on, we are bringing back the Duck. Serenity Cresselia is back this week. And this is a very interesting set, guys. This is something I came up with uh, with my friend Tony. And we were looking at the possible ways of dealing with Lopini. And Lopini's best ways of dealing with Cresselia are through Encore, Toxic, and Miracle. Those are like the three options that it really has. It can also boost with uh, with Power Up Punch, but it doesn't really want to take a Psychic from Cresselia and is easily revenged by a Scarfmon. So um, I can see really see him bringing Toxic to wear me down. And if he does that, I have Rest Recycle with a Chesto Berry. So I'm always able to get rid of the Toxic. I'm always able to uh, wake up and I'm always able to get my Chesto Berry back. So as long as I make sure that those conditions are met, that I'm only ever switching in on Lopany, or if Lopany's gone, that I'm switching in on things like Latias or whatever, this thing has a lot of survivability, more th more so than if it would have Moonlight, I think, uh, in this matchup, because I wouldn't be able to get rid of status. I'm not bringing Umbreon spoilers, so I'm not able to heal Bell off a Toxic if I get it. So uh, this is going to be a very nice set. Lunar Dance is there specifically because uh, there's going to be a lot of instances where I have to switch in either my Blastoise or my Infernape into one of his biggest threats being Volcarona to make sure that I don't get swept by it because if it comes in and it's able to set up for free then I'm kind of done for so I have to switch into my offensive checks to it as opposed to defensive checks because defensive checks to a Z Volcarona don't really exist. By the way I didn't explain but his Zemons are Volcarona, Electivire, and Floatzel and Volcarona is the most likely to run it. I can definitely see Volcarona coming it would be kind of crazy if it doesn't because fire plus bug pretty much destroys my entire defensive core and then he just needs one thing to be able to hit my salamence and my uh, my infernape simultaneously and i'm thinking something like psychic as it also deals with uh my quillfish so i can definitely see that and uh as long as i'm not running thick fat for example on pillow swine or if he gets up uh, a big enough boost with fire blast he can blow me back so it doesn't even matter so uh, something like that, definitely I would think Fire Blast, Bug Buzz, Psychic with Quiver Dance, uh, and Z Psychic so that he's able to knock out both my Infernape and my Salamence. So I can never let him get to plus two, plus two. Uh, I really need to make sure that he only ever stays at plus one. And for that reason, I'm going to be switching in my offensive checks a lot, i.e. why I'm bringing Lunar Dance. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this thing is here to deal with the Megalopony and that only. Moving on, we have... Uh, sorry, Alphonse the Metagross, uh, careful clear body, careful nature, uh, because I want to be able to switch in on things like Latias, on his Clefable, uh, even on things like a special Floatzel, mainly though Clefable and Latias, like this is my biggest check to the two of them, I have Meteor Mash, Earthquake Pursuit, and Stealth Rocks, you might be asking yourself, why are you running Earthquake over, um, over Rock Slide? The reason being that I don't want to get completely walled by Registeel, and that's the one thing that I need to weaken anyway to make sure that Salamence sweeps. 
So if I can check Registeel and Clefable simultaneously, I will take that any day. I've got leftovers for survivability. Uh, I can take, I believe, even a Specs Fire Blast from Clefable uh, from full. And I'm able to outspeed it in most cases as long as it's not running a tremendous amount of speed. And normally Clefable is going to be running uh, more HP than anything. And he would probably only speed creep my base 70s at zero speed anyway, or else he would need way too much to outspeed like an Adam in variety. Uh, and then his, his specs hits wouldn't be doing as much. I'm also factoring in Life Orb, of course, but Life Orb isn't as big of an issue because that means that he's not unaware and I can knock him out with a Sky Strike at some point during the game as long as I weaken the Registeel. So basically, Metagross's point is Pursuit Trap the Lottie, Meteor Mash the Clefable, get up rocks, and be able to Earthquake the Registeel if for whatever reason it comes. I also have Earthquake on there as it hits the Electivire and the Skuntank for the most amount of damage possible. Uh, so that's going to be very nice. And uh, yeah, I, I opted not for Rock Slide because... I'm not going to stay in on Volcarona anyway. I can't stay in. I need this thing to deal with Clefable and to deal with Latias. If I let this thing go down to Volk, I'm screwed. So I have to switch into either Blastoise or Infernape. Infernape, which you're about to see, uh, I just want to go over the EVs on my Metagross first. So we have 236 in HP, 140 in Spadef uh, with a careful nature. I believe this allows me to take... What was it again? Um, it allows me to take some special move that... Uh, I think it was plus one Clefable's uh, Flamethrower if he runs a, uh, like, a Babiri, uh, a Babiri set with, with Flamethrower. Like, I can easily take plus one or eight, even plus two, if I'm not mistaken. I know because I switched in on a, on a Life Orb Fire Blast from a Clefable, and I took, like, 83. So I was able to chew that up. Uh, not well, obviously, but I was still able to eat it, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's Metagross, those are the EVs, and I have 104 in attack, and that makes sure that I can uh, deal with Clefable and Pursuit Trap the Lottie into a KO it would Pursuit. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's Metagross, I have 28 speed as well, and uh, like I explained, the speed is for uh, Forest Clefable, to beat speed creeps, essentially. Second to last, we have Ace, the Infernape. I am bringing a Choice Scarf set for the third time this season, and as much as I hate to do so, because I hate confining Infernape to this role, uh, it, it's the only thing that makes sense this game. I need a revenge killer to Megalopony, as well as the biggest problem, which is going to be Volcarona. As you can see, I have Close Combat, Flare Blitz, Rock Slide, U-Turn. U-Turn is going to be very nice for the Lottie switching, as it's his most, most comfortable switching to both of my stabs. Uh, and uh, Clefable is obviously not a very good switch into Flare Blitz, especially if I'm banded. Uh, Rock Slide is there specifically for the Volcarona because I don't want it sweeping me, uh, and Flare Blitz is there to deal uh, neutral damage across his team, basically. I don't want Delmise completely walling me, uh, and I didn't want to run Gunk Shot because I'm not a fan of missing, unlike some people in this league uh, <laughs> who, uh, who intentionally run 70% accurate moves. I don't know why you do that, but anyway. Uh, and I've got Close Combat, of course, because it hits the Megalopony, uh, the Crocodile, the Registeel, uh, as well as the Staraptor for the most amount of damage uh, across all of my moves. Obviously, Flare Blitz and Close Combat hit Staraptor evenly. Uh, same thing with Evire, and same thing with Skun Tank. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it. I did see a physically defensive Rocky Helmet uh, Staraptor in one of my games, and it was able to chip down my Infernape, and that's what I mean. Like, I need my Cresselia, Cresselia to be able to Lunar Dance up my Infernape if need be. Like, if my Crest gets low, and his Volk comes in on it, and I know he's going to set up, and my Infernape's, like, at... 30. Uh, I can't risk him attacking into my Infernape, so my best option at that point would be to click Lunar Dance. That way, if he does set up, I get my Infernape back up to full. I'm able to Rock Slide and kill the Volcarona, so on and so forth. So that's the idea behind this set. Of course, we are Blaze because if we do get below 25, 30%, uh, excuse me, uh, then we will get a boosted Flare Blitz, which is going to be our strongest attack to hit his entire team across. So that's going to be very nice. Anyway, moving on, our last mon on the team is Blastoise Gamagori, who saved us last week and was able to clutch out a win. I'm bringing a very similar set, but this time I'm bringing the only inaccurate move, I want to say, that I've run all season. Maybe maybe had another one somewhere in there, but, uh, well, Meteor Mash specifically on uh, <laughs> on our Metagross. That can obviously miss, but I'm not going to run Iron Head over Meteor Mash. That's just ridiculous. The attack raises are too valuable, and the, dam the damage output as well. But uh, I do have Hydro Pump on this Blastoise because this is going to be my best way to damage this Clefable across my entire team outside of the... Uh, Metagross, and as you can see, his team doesn't switch in too well to Blastoise. Like, the one thing that can take water moves decently well is going to be Delmise, and Delmise doesn't deal with my Dark Pulse stab, 
uh, with the Mega Launcher, obviously. I am a quiet nature. I actually decided to go minus speed because, as you can see, I have Rock Slide on this thing. So, his Volt can run Giga Drain. I'm very aware of this. Uh, I have 252 HP and 36 Spit F. This is to make sure that Modest, Max Special Attack, Volk with plus one with a Giga Drain cannot knock me out after rocks, uh, essentially. And uh, I'm able to live it every time. And then I can get off a Rock Slide. If he happens to be Charty Berry, he has to set up again or he dies to Infernape anyway. So I'm making sure that Volk can only ever get one kill, essentially, with this team, is the dynamic behind it. He literally has to predict me to go into Infernape and Psychic on the turn that I do so to be able to outplay my counterplay to his Volcarona. Uh, as you can see, that's like the biggest thing that I'm worried about is his Volk on his team, so I wanna make sure that I'm able to check it uh, on all fronts. I said I wasn't running Rock Slide on Metagross, but that's because I don't want Registeel to wall me. I've got Rapid Spin on the set because his only ghost is Delmize. Uh, it's not a great spin blocker against the Mega Blastoise because I am faster. I'm able to Dark Pulse. I can flinch it down. He doesn't necessarily want to switch in on a potential Dark Pulse because then I could 2 KO him, so it's kind of dangerous. And uh, he does have some decent hazard setters, I want to say, with Registeel, Clefable, and uh, Crocodile being the main ones. Uh, no, there's no others. So yeah, those three specifically, but I'm pretty sure Crook is the one that's going to be coming with Rocks, and Clefable would more so be a Cleric set, I want to say, uh, for the rest of his team, because maybe passing Wishes into Latias isn't such a bad thing against my team. Uh, what I do expect, however, is a Scarf Latias, so I'm going to put that out there right now. Uh, that was the first set that I saw when I looked at his team, I was like, Scarf Latias. It has to come, because there's no other way for him to deal with my Salamence. If I decide to bring Steelium Z, I can knock out even a... Uh, an unaware Clefable if he doesn't have Beery Berry, and then I can keep Moxie boosting and then beat the rest of his team. So he needs something faster that can knock out uh, my uh, my Salamence should it get set up. And the only thing on his team that can do that is Lottie. If he relies on fake out pressure with Lopany, then I'm going to be protecting constantly in his face, and I'm going to be able to knock him out with a plus one Dragon Claw because I know how much uh, how much. Um, HP he can invest into his Lopany if he wants to outspeed things like my Thunderous and my Infernape. So I know that a plus one Dragon Claw for a fact does knock out Lopany. It's essentially an outrage at neutral. So Lop's a little bit bulky, but not too bulky. Uh, and then the only other thing that he has to deal with Salamence is Registeel, but as you guys saw the rest of the team, like Registeel does not deal well with Pillaswine. It doesn't deal well with my Metagross in theory, uh, because I do have uh, the Earthquake. It doesn't deal well with my Infernape, and it doesn't deal well with my Blastoise. So all of those things, like he can try to get up Hazards in front of me, I'm just going to spin them away. He can try to T-Wave me, I'm just going to Hydro Pump him repeatedly and, and wear him down. So I don't see Registeel coming. The main six that I see coming are going to be Lopany, uh, Latias, Clefable, Crook, Volcarona, and uh, either Delmize or the Staraptor. If uh, if my recording just lagged there, I'm sorry. I don't know what the heck just happened, but uh, if it didn't, then great. But those are the six to seven that I can see coming. I think Delmize is going to come over Staraptor because Staraptor is essentially hard walled by Metagross and it has to U-turn out every time. And every time it does that on something like Pillowswine or uh, Infernape, I get off a free attack. Or even with Blastoise, he can't afford those free attacks, I think, with his team. So I don't think he would bring a choice lock to Staraptor. If Staraptor comes, it comes as a check to Infernape. And it's able to do it decently well with a Rocky Helmet and Intimidate, especially if it's physically defensive. Uh, you'd think that Staraptor is like super frail, but it actually just always wears itself down because of Reckless Brave Bird. So uh, Staraptor can do the job in walling Infernape if I decide to bring a, uh, a Scarf set. If he brings Staraptor, that's what it's going to be. If he brings Delmize, I'm assuming either Colber or uh, Salt Vest to deal with my Blastoise. Uh, Megalopony is going to have, like I said, either Encore Toxic or Mirror Coat to deal with my Crest. Uh, and then the rest is up to him. He can run Power Punch, Return, and Quick Attack if he wants to, or High Jump Kick, which I think he would run High Jump Kick because it would deal with my Umbreon quite well. Uh, and not let him get worn down to foul play as he's trying to power a punch and not killing me. Uh, and Latias, I see coming either Scarfed or Habanberry, it would be an option. Uh, Clefable unaware with uh, Wish, potentially rocks, depending on what he wants to do. And then uh, Volcarona is going to be set up uh, with, like I said, Bug Buzz, Psychic, and Fire Move. And uh, Crook, I could honestly see coming as a Choice Scarf variant, uh, because it does deal with my non-Choice Scarf Mons. Uh, and it does Pursuit Trap very well. It Pursuit Traps my Cresselia, my Metagross, and should I bring Decidueye, it also Pursuit Traps that. So uh, I think I've covered the bases uh, really, really well. Uh, the one thing that would like completely catch me off guard, I think, would be uh, a, like a Curse Registeel. 
and then I would have to pretty much either sack my Infernape or sack my Metagross to beat it. Uh, mainly Infernape because that's the only way I'm going to break through the curses. Blastoise could do the job, but at the same time, like, I don't want to be taking plus one Earthquakes and whatnot, but I guess I could let my Blastoise get low. Uh, I gotta be careful. I gotta not let Blastoise get weakened if I see Registeel, essentially. That's going to be the game plan. But uh, that's the team builder, guys. Uh, that's what we've got for Jack. Hopefully it, it pans out and uh, we're able to pick up yet another win this season and uh, go 6-0. and That would be awesome going into week 7 because I'm going to tell you right now, I checked my matchup for week 7. I'm not excited. Uh, Leo has a ridiculous team and I don't really want to play against it with my team. So uh, if I do get a 6th win this week, that would be a huge, huge cushion for me. Uh, going into week seven i wouldn't be as pressured to win that game so that's gonna be very nice but uh yeah that's the team guys again if you uh, if you did enjoy and if you're excited to see our game six tomorrow week six rather tomorrow 2 p.m eastern as usual then make sure to leave that uh, like down below for me and uh hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and i will catch you guys later ciao